there are a few things I'm very passionate about. One is my country, this beautiful island of Jamaica, and the other is research and human capital development. Now, I like to give people facts because when you make decisions on the basis of facts rather than emotions, you make good decisions. Listen to this. The Jamaica Institute of Engineers, the Bureau of Standards and others have collaborated to create a new building code for Jamaica. However, the buildings constructed over the last century and up to 2012 would not have benefited from the new provisions, which the Director of Engineering at the BSJ expects to make Jamaica's buildings significantly more resilient to climate change and weather events. Government's limited fiscal space puts a lid on any possibility for major contributions from the public sector to retrofit or reinforce these pre-2012 buildings. The lack of regulations in dealing with squatting and the proliferation of poorly constructed dwellings along coastlines and the banks of gullies multiply the risk to an even greater level. These risks include loss of life and property, flooding, economic shocks from the cost to the public sector to deal with relief supplies, shelter and sustenance from many destitute families. Not only does this retard productivity, it also places the economy in a vulnerable state as funds that should have been used to enhance development now have to be channeled into disaster relief. As the IDB, 2000, said, empirical evidence suggests that there is a correlation between poverty incidence and vulnerability to disasters. Countries with widespread poverty tend to experience more frequent natural disasters than developed countries, and natural disasters in these countries cause more fatalities and damages relative to their population and GDPs. An estimated 70% of all disasters and 91% of disaster-related fatalities occurred in developing countries between 1970 and 1999. They also suggested that as a result of the correlation between poverty and vulnerability to disasters, there will be an even greater impact on individual welfare than in developed countries 4.11 examining the Caribbean catastrophic risk insurance facility whereas in the past, the World Bank, bilateral partners and multilateral agencies would readily try to assist Caribbean countries with their disaster recovery. The World Bank has 50 Chaviriot, Selene Inter-American Development Bank 2000, Natural Disasters in Latin America and the Caribbean, an overview of risk. Research Department, IDB, Washington, D.C. been instrumental in the creation and financing of the Caribbean Catastrophic Risk Insurance Facility, CCRIF, no doubt, to get these countries' leaders to put contingency plans in place, through an insurance facility, to offset the cost of recovery. Unfortunately, though Jamaica reportedly paid a 400,000 US dollars participatory fee and 4 million US dollars of premium for that year, it received nothing to offset its 2 million US dollars worth of damage from Hurricane Dean. Since the CCRIF has a clause that requires a trigger of a disaster of a specific magnitude before a payout will be made, hence, the country has also had to find other sources of funding to pay for recovery and repairs after the successive disasters. One senior environmental and planning specialist interviewed confirmed that CCRIF still costs Jamaica between 3 to 4 million dollars annually. The CCRIF is a risk pooling facility, owned, operated and registered in the Caribbean for Caribbean governments. It is designed to limit the financial impact of catastrophic hurricanes and earthquakes to Caribbean governments by quickly providing short-term liquidity when a policy is triggered. The facility was developed through funding from the Japanese government, and was capitalized through contributions to a multi-donor trust fund by the Government of Canada, the European Union, the World Bank, the governments of the United Kingdom and France, the Caribbean Development Bank and the governments of Ireland and Bermuda, as well as through membership fees paid by participating governments, JIS. 2012 Prime Minister Simpson Miller has reportedly suggested that Jamaica may need to consider setting up a disaster relief fund of its own. CCRIF's 2013-2015 strategic plan states that they are considering bringing an excess rainfall product to the market by 2012, accompanied by a plan to finalize trigger and coverage option to be discussed first with Jamaica, then with other countries in the Caribbean. At present the CCRIF only covers wind damage from a Category 4, 4, or more severe hurricane, as well as other disasters Jamaica Information Service 2012. PM suggests disaster relief fund. Kingston, Jamaica. Accessed from http. 
colon slash slash www.jis.gov.jmopm news slash 32139 disaster relief fund suggested by PM on the 11th of November 2012 154 Brooks 2012 of the Arizona Journal of Environmental Law and Policy examined CCRIF's operations and parametric insurance payouts to date and concluded that the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility has undeniably been a breath of fresh air for the Caribbean region. Terrorized by natural disasters, and confronted by a future promising further weather deterioration in the face of climate change, the region has been able to call upon CCRIF in some of its most critical hours of need. The facility's exceptional framework enabled it, in most of these instances, to answer the call. Notwithstanding its success, however, CCRIF's data issues have thus far translated into at least one questionable payout and one questionable non-payout. Although it is tempting to argue that these payout follies are theoretically and mathematically inconsequential, the Caribbean states that fell victim to them would surely argue otherwise. Until the data problems are genuinely addressed, in contrast with the facility's slow and highly inefficient efforts to correct them, the risk of additional miss payouts will remain. But it need not remain. If the facility adopts the proposal set forth in this article, its data woes will come to an end, allowing it to answer the Caribbean's call not just most of the time, but every time who additionally financial resources that would normally flow from benefactor nations are now restricted, as the European Union countries of the Americas, and others are faced with their own austerity measures due to a severe recession that has had global implications since 2008 to present. CCRIF Payouts Brooks, 2012, noted that CCRIF has paid out on 8, 8, claims for two tropical cyclones, two earthquakes, and one hurricane amounting to US dollars to seven Caribbean countries since its inception in 2007. These included Hurricane Ike in Turks and Caicos, 2008, and the Haitian earthquake, 2010. Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and St. Lucia reportedly received total payouts of US dollars as a result of damage by Hurricane Thomas in 2010. Laudable as these are, Brooks found that the parametric used by CCRIF to determine a country's zone's level of exposure was not based on empirical data, which were not available at the outset, but on estimates. Hence they have questioned the payout of 500,000 US dollars to Dominica in 2007, while the 52 Brooks, Lauren 2012, the Caribbean Catastrophic Insurance Risk Insurance Facility, Parametric Insurance Payouts Without Proper Parameters, in Arizona Journal of Environmental Law and Policy, the 15th of August, 2012, accessed from http, colon slash slash, www dot agile dot com slash articles slash the dash caribbean dash catastrophe dash risk dash insurance facility parametric insurance payouts without proper parameters the 11th of november 2012 devastating hurricane dean did not trigger a payout they felt that ccrif therefore had no way of confirming the accuracy of their assumptions and ultimately the payout decision as a senior technocrat in the Caribbean noted in an elite interview for this study, the amount of money that is spent on the risk insurance facility, I don't know that we have spent that in terms of providing resource for prevention. Dean was a very good example. When the finance minister called us in and said I thought I was getting a payout on the CCRIF. Why are we not getting a payout on the CCRIF? They said that we didn't trigger. Yes, it was a category X storm that could have triggered but the eye was off coast, and so we were experiencing the outer bands, which would not have triggered the parametric for wind speed. Once that was averaged out across the island we were well below that trigger, but it caused destruction, and there was more destruction by way of precipitation, than wind damage 53 The World Bank, 2012, presented further details of CCRIF's payouts up to 2012. They were as follows. Table 24. Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility Payouts as of the 26th of June 2012 Event Date Member Affected Payout US Dollars Earthquake the 29th of November 2007 Dominica 528,021 Earthquake the 29th of November 
2007 St. Lucia 418. 976 Tropical Cyclone Ike September 2008 Turks and Caicos 6,303,913 Earthquake 12 January 2010 87,753,579 Tropical Cyclone El August 2010 Anguilla 4,282,733 Tropical Cyclone Thomas October 2010 Barbados 8,560 247 Tropical Cyclone Thomas October 2010 St. Lucia 3,241,613 Tropical Cyclone Thomas October 2010 St. Vincent and the Grenadines 1,090,388 Total payout 32,179,470 US dollar source Table replicated from World Bank 2012 Table 3 Page 13 Caribbean countries are also vulnerable to tropical cyclones, droughts, earthquakes, landslides, coastal flooding and alluvial flooding. An IDBUE project such as this should encourage the Jamaican government to strengthen its infrastructural resilience and reap the spillover benefit of lower insurance premiums. Thank you for being intellectually engaged in this discourse, this excerpt from the IDB. Now let's hear what the finance minister had to say on Twitter in his exposition on the antecedents of Chris. Dr. Nigel Clark's explanation exposition on the CCRIF. I love PSM. However, PSM did not start CCRIF. The claim is false. Furthermore, the messaging suppresses the complex and contradictory history of CCRIF and Jamaica. We will not allow you to get away with criticizing and complaining about the Gaja's maintenance of CCRIF policies when they do not pay out after hurricanes have affected Jamaica, and then seek to claim credit when they do pay out. That is the same kind of unprincipled approach we have called out before. Let's unpack it all below. Keen observers of public affairs would be aware of the length of time that CCRIF has been around, as that history is well documented online, in the media, in Parliament and in the public space over the past 20 years, in hundreds of articles, posts and news stories. A well-known fact does not need repeating. Those who proclaim to unearth or reveal or discover CCRIF's beginnings only reveal their own ignorance regarding the subject matter. However, CCRIF has not had a smooth reception in Jamaica, particularly the first five years of this administration when opposition parliamentarians repeatedly chided and questioned the Gaj for continuing with CCRIF against the backdrop of no payouts for years and years. However, the government chose to stick with CCRIF when we did not have to, despite the negativity, and that is where our joy and pride come from. We stuck with CCRIF when others questioned. The context is that despite Jamaica's experience of five hurricanes and tropical storms that badly affected Jamaica between 2007 and 2016 there was no payout from the CCRIF. Hurricane Dean, 2007, did not trigger a CCRIF payout. Tropical Storm Nicole, 2008, did not trigger a CCRIF payout. Tropical Storm Gustav, 2008, did not trigger a CCRIF payout. Hurricane Sandy, 2012 did not trigger a CCRIF payout then. Hurricane Matthew, 2016, did not trigger a payout. As such, by 2017, opposition parliamentarians were up in arms. But even before that, in the last month of the PNP administration in January, 2016, Minister of Local Government Noel Arscott expressed dissatisfaction with CCRIF and advocated for it to be renegotiated. Then POC Chairman, Former MP Wykeham McNeil presided over a POC meeting in 2017 where they called for a review of the arrangements with CCRIF. Journalist George Davis reported on the questioning of MOF officials about CCRIF by the trifecta of Fitz Jackson, Mikhail Phillips and Wykeham McNeil and how POC members were left fuming after finding out that again there was no payout from CCRIF. Quoting from the minutes of this May 17, 2024 POC meeting. Mikhail Phillips recommended that going forward consideration should be given to self-insurances, a replacement for CCRIF2, which Messrs. Philip Powell and Fitz Jackson agreed. Mr. Powell asked the financial secretary whether the country had any other insurance policies for weather events, and the financial secretary responded that he was not aware of any dot source. Minutes of this May 17, 2024 POC meeting, when my colleague, Minister Desmond McKenzie, reported to Parliament on the extent of the damage from flood rains, 
Based on the assessment that it was unlikely that the CCRIF policy would be triggered, Mikhail Phillips, MP, speaking about the Gaj CCRIF policy asked, Is it worth it? So, by the time I became Minister of Finance in early 2018, the sentiment on CCRIF was profoundly negative, in particular, from opposition MPs, and each year the sentiment worsened. As such, I faced increasing pressure locally as Minister of Finance to terminate or reduce our arrangements with the CCRIF. I listened and absorbed this pressure. In my very first budget presentation, I set out Jamaica's recommitment to CCRIF within a broader policy for the financing of natural disaster risk consisting of several layers, including catastrophe bonds, contingent credit claims, traditional insurance products like the CCRIF, fiscal savings in the contingencies fund, and the annual budget. The MOF held discussions with CCRIF, and we looked at how we could optimize our policies in light of the framework we wished to pursue. CCRIF policies are renews annually and have several parameters. See the graphic below and pay attention to the definitions, especially the definition of attachment point which is like the deductible in a home insurance policy. The best way to describe what was happening is to borrow from the parable of the fishing net in the Gospel of Matthew. There was nothing wrong with the fishing net. Jamaica just needed to cast the fishing net on the other side of the boat. Suffice to say that Jamaica CCRIF polices today have completely different parameters from the CCRIF policies of 2007. For example, we have significantly lower deductible, a 50% higher coverage limit, and a much lower exhaustion point. The first ever payout from CCRIF to Jamaica of 3.5 million US dollars came in relation to Tropical Cyclone ETA which impacted Jamaica in October 2020 when our excess rainfall policy was triggered. This was 13 years after Jamaica took out its first policy with CCRIF. And yes, we continued with CCRF even in 2020, when due to COVID-19, GOJ's revenues tanked by $75 billion overnight, and COVID expenses added $40 billion to the budget. And the second payout from CCRIF will be made in 2024 in relation to Hurricane Barrel in the amount of 16.5 million US dollars as our tropical cyclone policy has triggered. The Honorable Finance Minister has given an outline, a detailed outline of the antecedents of the CCRIF. Now I've provided some additional facts. You can make your decisions from those facts. However, let's assume that what this technocrat had said, the estimate of roughly $4 million annually, and this was in 2012 dollars, not considering inflation or any possible increase in premium, 20 times 4 million is 80 million. Now, if we are to make the assumption from 2007 being the first payout of premium, it would be 17 times 4, which would be 68 million US dollars. That would be from 2007 to 2024, $68 million premium or premium, if you want to use that plural format, compared to a payout of 16.5. Now, there's nothing wrong with continuing with the insurance, but could it be that we could put more in the local fund to focus on resilience and infrastructural strengthening than to be paying all of this in premium and then getting back a payout like this when there is a trigger. Let's go back to the Honorable Minister's tweets to hear what he had to say. I am proud that we stuck with the CCRIF and persevered as a matter of principle. The CCRIF is an essential layer in Jamaica's disaster risk financing framework that complements other layers and its value is not based on whether it triggers in the short term. Its value lies in having it for the long term. We also pursued innovative strategies including working with Canada, through the CARICOM Canada Climate Adaptation Fund, to help us pay CCRIF premiums during the COVID years. You now, as one of the countries that has contributed significantly to high carbon emission, we commend Canada for making that commitment based on the agreement, the Paris Agreement and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We look forward to others up north doing the same thing because we know the impact of their operations on the environment and climate change. The Inter-American Development Bank, the IDB, sometimes referred to as IADB, they have also done quite a bit of research and made significant recommendations for the increasing resilience across the Caribbean in infrastructure to withstand the impact of natural disasters. I'm looking forward to the government of Jamaica addressing those recommendations as well. Just over a month ago, CCRIF organized a series of events 
including a public event in Jamaica on June 5, 2024, to reflect on Hurricane Yvonne, 20 years after it ravaged the Caribbean in 2004, recalled that Yvonne completely devastated Grenada, submerged Cayman, battered Haiti and delivered the most comprehensive damage to Jamaica of any hurricane since Hurricane Gilbert in 1988. The creation or a regional catastrophe risk insurance facility was born out of the Yvonne experience. CCRIF's Yvonne 20 event was reported on in the Jamaican media. I spoke at the event as did Dr. Omar Davis, who was finance minister at the time of Hurricane Yvonne. Dr. Davis recounted his experience that led him, in 2004, to request the technical assistance of the World Bank through JSIF and this WB technical assistance eventually played a vital role in CCRIF's formation. In my contribution to this June 5th, 2024 CCRIF event, my remarks, which CCRIF has on its website, included. Where the finance minister's statement is in bold or italics, the system will not read it, so I'm going to be reading it for you. Each generation builds on the work of the previous. What has changed with respect to Jamaica is that the approach today, decidedly, is one where we have layers of financial instruments designed to deliver fiscal resources in the event of an emergency. At the dawn of this administration, in 2016 the MOFPS had a prox J$94 M in the contingencies fund and CCRIF policies with a 63 million US dollars tropical cyclone coverage limit, 16 million US dollars excess rainfall coverage limit and 63 million US dollars earthquake coverage limit. That was it. Essentially, a single layer of CCRIF policies. Today the MOFPS has multiple layers of coverage. 3.3 billion in the contingencies fund with a new legislative limit of 10 billion up from 100 million where it had been since 1992. I received an updated statement today. This is a minister's statement. A new national disaster fund to which we are mandated by law passed in 2024 to save annually, including up to 1 billion this year until it gets to 10 billion. 400 million in credit contingency claim with the IDB, inclusive of 300 million for hurricane and or earthquakes and 100 million for pandemics. CCRIF policies with 77 million US dollars tropical cyclone coverage limit, 29 million excess rainfall coverage limit, and 96 million earthquake coverage limit, and US 150 million catastrophe bond as the highest layer. Now, I want us to look at this statement in this IDB report. Prime Minister Simpson Miller has reportedly suggested that Jamaica may need to consider setting up a disaster relief fund of its own. CCRIF's 2013-2015 strategic plan states that they are considering bringing an excess rainfall product to the market by 2012. So I have no problem at all with the questions that were raised, whether by Mr. R. Scott, Mr. Phillips and others who were noted as the trifecta because you have to ask questions of insurance providers or any other service provider so that you can get the best benefit, not just for yourself, but for the country. So I have no problem with that. It is interesting that Prime Minister Simpson Miller had made the recommendation and to now see the list that has been outlined by the Honourable Minister. As we experienced over the period 2007 to 2017, with the MOFPS having essentially a single layer of protection is highly suboptimal and led to a frustrating experience as evidenced above. A single layer cannot provide protection against the range of natural disaster events that we will likely experience. We now have multiple layers. As I said before, while it is not designed, nor is it expected, that every storm should trigger all instruments, the idea is that some instruments provide resources for every storm. So... Our contribution has been to persevere with, and increase our CCRIF coverage and then to build out, and capitalize as required, a multi-layered suite of additional disaster risk financing instruments, and we are not finished yet. Of course, there are other sources of financing, including grant funding for resilience building and strengthening the infrastructure. Let's see whether or not the government of Jamaica will meet the criteria that are required and tap into those resources as well. Like the generation of Caribbean finance ministers who experienced Yvonne, I had my own come home to Jesus moment with respect to the fiscal carnage we would be exposed to if we left ourselves fiscally unprepared. As I said at the CCRIF Yvonne 20 event on June 5, 
2024. In October 2016, Hurricane Matthew was headed for Jamaica and... Again, the minister's statement is in bold, and so I'll read. I took that as my cue and said, we're going to make sure that we build fiscal resilience that can provide us with protection or provide with emergency resources that can help us respond to a natural disaster. My campaign about building a multi-layered suite of instruments was born out of the Hurricane Matthew experience. Back to CCRIFS founding. The multilateral started work on the Caribbean's behalf in 2004. In collaboration with international donors and CCRIF issued its first policies in 2007. As a legal entity CCRIF is domiciled in Cayman, has no physical offices and operates virtually with its CEO based in St. Lucia. As CCRIF includes on its website. CCRIF was developed under the technical leadership of the World Bank and with a grant from the government of Japan. It was capitalized through contributions to a multi-donor trust fund, MDTF, by the government of Canada, the European Union, the World Bank, the governments of the UK and France, the Caribbean Development Bank, and the government of Ireland and Bermuda, as well as through membership fees paid by participating governments. You will recall that I'd already shared that with you from the IDB report. We move on. Now, first, let me say that this thread should not have been accessory. But I am concerned for my country that the constant fight to split the Solomonic baby in two while claiming peace is ultimately endangers the life of the baby. I am interested in preserving, nurturing and growing the baby. As such, it is important that disaster risk financing be embedded in our national planning for decades to come, and for our structures and policies to grow in coverage and sophistication. It's always a nice little touch to include a biblical analogy, but that Solomonic baby belonged to one mother. The antecedents of the CCRIF as presented in this video summary really shows that it is a collaboration between both administrations and I look forward to a Jamaica where we can acknowledge contributions from both sides. Let's go back to Dr. Clark's tweets as we conclude. This is why I have elevated the Gauges National Natural Disaster Risk Financing Framework to the level of a national policy and taken it into the public square. The National Natural Disaster Risk Financing Policy has now been adopted and approved by all of the Parliament and is the policy of the country on this subject. It is owned by all of us. No, many persons who know me know that I am very passionate about this island of Jamaica. I'm also passionate about unearthing facts. Dr. Clark presented a series of tweets. The research might have been done by one of his junior officers because the years are not adding up and the consistency is not aligning at all. He mentioned that Portia Simpson Miller would not have been instrumental in the formation of CRIF. However, he did say that Dr. Davies was instrumental in the formation of CRIF. Dr. Davies would have been finance minister under the Honorable P.J. Patterson at the time, then it would have been followed by him being finance minister under the Honorable Portia Simpson Miller in 2007 when the first payment was made to CRIF as outlined by Dr. Clark himself. The information is readily available as he mentioned. There are many sources online for us to check. Unfortunately, our people really do not like to read and those of us who are prone to doing research have to do the research for them. It is outlined here that the Honorable PJ Patterson was Prime Minister in 2004 when the conversation about CRIF and the need for CRIF started. The information is there as factually presented that the Honorable Portia Simpson Miller was Prime Minister in 2007 Dr. Clark mentioned that Dr. Omar Davis was instrumental in the formation of CRIF. Now, if Dr. Omar Davis was a finance minister under the Honorable Portia Simpson Miller as Prime Minister, and the Honorable Portia Simpson Miller was Prime Minister in 2007, then it appears that somehow the junior staff who would have done the research for Dr. Clark to present these tweets may have gotten some days mixed up. Or perhaps these are alternative facts. I don't know. You can decide. And while we're at it, we probably want to give Mrs. Portia Simpson Miller the credit for her foresight in recommending that we probably needed to have a disaster relief fund because clearly what the minister has presented aligns with Jamaica now having a disaster relief fund. Do you think we can get our act together and put Jamaica first? Can we do that? You know, when you go to college or university or school and we have group work and each person make a contribution to the group work, we like to acknowledge them 
by having their names on the project so that each person can get a part of the grade. We can do that for Jamaica too. It's all right, we can do it. We can acknowledge the contribution of everybody and we can be honest and factual. I mean, real facts, not alternative facts. Jamaica, Jamaica.